The late edition with Marcus Brigstock in half an hour. But first, kicking off the comedy on BBC Two with quick fire satire. It's Mock the Week. Hello, welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The series is sadly over now, but we couldn't leave without letting you see some of our favourite games from the show so far. And we're also going to show you some of the bits we couldn't fit in first time round. So here they are. Hope you enjoy them. The next round is called Headliners. I show the teams a photo of someone who's been making the news this week along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. The teams have to tell me what the letters stand for. Here is a picture of Bob Geldof. What do the letters B O F A stand for? Is it is it um, Bob's odor-free armpit? <laughs> is it Bob? Oh, f Africa! <laughs> uh, is it Bob? Ouch! Fleas again! <laughs> I don't think that's Geldof. I think I think the headline is Britney on fags again. <laughs> Bob's owl fight aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't stand a chance. The owl constantly had the high ground and kept yeah. swooping <laughs> and swooping. And he tried to fend him off with like a rolled up leaflet about something good, but he just kept going. <laughs> it attached itself to its head and <laughs> he can't be seen to hurt a living thing. He's a kind man, but eventually he just had to kill it with a brick. <laughs> His tactics were always bad in that. He actually tried to sneak up on the L, but then the head spun all the way around. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the L said, I gotcha. Oh, I'm back. Don't ever try that, because they know exactly what you're doing. Great yeah. fighters, the owls. <laughs> Who would win in yeah. a fight between an owl and a tiger? An owl. An owl. An owl. An, an, owl. Owl. an owl has the high ground, Linda. <laughs> the, the tiger, it's just going to come down. <laughs> it's... It will... Exactly. The owl would basically... The owl would basically adopt Muhammad Ali's rope-a-dope. It would make the tiger just swing itself out and then just go in and peck it. <laughs> I think, hand on heart, we all know this is not making the edit. <laughs> <laughs> our next round tonight is called Between the Lines. Rory and Hugh, can you make your way mm -hmm. to our Mock the Week press pit? In this round, one player takes the role of a famous person making a speech, while the other says what they really mean. In the light of Tory party manoeuvrings this week on the leadership, Rory, you are Michael Howard, presenting his plans to stand aside as leader of the Conservatives. Hugh, tell us what he's really saying. <laughs> At the last election, we had a remarkable result. We lost. <laughs> it was a tremendous achievement. We lost really badly. <laughs> but there's still a lot of work to be done. Bye then. <laughs> I'm... I'm much too old to lead the Conservative Party. Kenneth Clark is much too old to lead the Conservative Party. <laughs> I've laid out a sensible time frame for my departure. I must be back before sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that there were problems with the previous system of selection for the leader. Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> this time, I hope we'll have a free and a fair fight. I'll stop David Davis if it kills me. <laughs> we need to focus on our core priorities. Can anyone remember our core priorities? <laughs> and then we'll be able to go forward, unite around a new leader, and triumph at the next election. Not even I'm thinking what he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. 
Now we play a round called Spinning the News, which involves everybody. So if you could all move over towards the performance area, please. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. If I judge the player's got a big enough laugh, he or she gets to sit down again. The first team to all its players sitting down at the desk wins the round. OK, let's have our first topic. That is... What the f name of is that? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's spin the wheel again. Oh, oh, oh is it? Okay, God. It is, of course, national surveys. Good luck with this one, folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They did a survey this week that said that 20% of British men have a problem with premature ejaculation. The others just don't think it's really a problem. <laughs> Sex and an early night. <laughs> they brought out a, a condom for premature ejaculation and, and basically it's got an anaesthetic in the lining so it makes you numb and you can last for longer. Or you can wear it inside out and you don't have to wake anybody up. <laughs> Well done, Frankie, you can sit down. <laughs> ah, David Blunt, oh, straight in. Uh, I'm back, uh, and this time it's personnel. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> today I will bring forward uh, draft <laughs> proposals. I'm oh, sorry, I read that again. Uh, draft <laughs> proposals. <laughs> no, uh, right first time. <laughs> The next topic is charity. Joe, you go for that? All this talk of famine makes you a bit peckish, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's comic relief, right? Keep asking me if I'll go out to Africa, you know, to sort of comfort people. But how are they going to feel with me getting off the plane? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> You're all hungry, are you? Might have had a good dinner. OK, Asbos. Who wants to go in on Asbos? It's Linda. Yeah, I think people are a bit uh, down on Asbos, but you've got to remember, this, these are the only qualifications that some kids are going to get. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the nation's health. Uh, apparently, it's very important to stay healthy, to have five portions of fruit a day. I do that. I have half a packet of Starburst. <laughs> uh, the Tories are very big on MRSA, which I found a bit surprising. I reckon most of them thought it was the way a posh man would pronounce the lead singer of the Smiths. <laughs> what is that final topic? It's gay marriage. <laughs> Who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's expand it out. Let's say it's gay rights, then. How's that? Well, <laughs> the new Pope not exactly in favour, is he? He's not in favour of a few things. He recently described condoms as being sinful. How come we've got to the stage where people who never have sex are telling those people who do have sex how to have sex? <laughs> I mean, the Pope's there, isn't he? He's going, homosexuality is unnatural. Surely the most unnatural thing in the world is not having any sex whatsoever. <laughs> Very good, Andy. Frankie, do you want to take a crack at that topic? <laughs> nice choice of phrase there. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen all this, this stuff about gay adoption? What's the, what's the controversy? I'd have loved to have had a gay dad... Do you remember all that stuff at school? Oh, my dad will batter your dad. My dad could batter your dad. Listen, my dad will shag your dad. <laughs> and your dad will enjoy it. <laughs> well, guys, for that, thank you, congratulations, you win. Our next game is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories relating to current events. For each category, I read out an answer, and the players have to guess what the question might be. David, which category would you like? Uh, sport, please. Category is sport. The answer is 
a streaker, a stalker and a defrocked priest. What is the question? It's not, what, what do we need to get this party started? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it what are three acceptable professions if you want to become a scoutmaster? <laughs> Is it, what was the hugely unpopular follow-up to The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe? <laughs> <laughs> is it the three costumes that Harry rejected before going for the Nazi? <laughs> <laughs> is it, which are the three interruptions to play that make watching tennis bearable? That is exceptionally good. It is to do with tennis, yeah? Unwanted guests. Oh, it's it's three people tennis. who've been banned from Wimbledon, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's probably right. The actual can't. question I was looking for is who are among the ten undesirables banned from Wimbledon this year? One of those banned is streaker Mark Roberts, a working-class Liverpudlian who ran naked on Centre Court in 2002. This led to a huge internal inquiry as to how on earth a working-class person made it through the main gate. <laughs> Isn't it going to be hilarious, though, if a Scottish guy wins Wimbledon? <laughs> That's going to be fantastic, because we couldn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 has to, it has to be said, it is it always a pleasure, to a certain extent, not to be English at this exact time of year. Because in <laughs> Ireland, we don't have anyone who won it 67 years ago, so we don't feel we're owed winning it now, right? I believe we, it was oh. Bonnie Austin, wasn't it? <laughs> Anyway, footage of them looks ridiculous. They're in really long trousers doing this, like, meh, I won the trophy, and then down. That's the last person who won it. It was faster in those days, wasn't it? It was know? faster, they and, didn't hang and jumpier as well. They seem to get their hand from there to there without any movement in the middle. It's big, there, <laughs> bang. Oh, Fred Perry, win, down again. <laughs> <laughs> The hideous cliche is that if you win, you have to clamber up through the crowd now to hug your father or your mother who are sitting there. Like that, this happens all the time. And this, at this stage, surely the twist would be that they would climb down for Christ's sake. <laughs> You've just played three and a half hours of tennis for Jay. <laughs> just stand there, and go, come on down, you lazy bastard. You've been sitting there for all of you. <laughs> go on, climb across the it's... people if you can, mother. Uh, <laughs> What do you think when they get to the top? They go, very, very good. I still loved your brother more, though. Uh... <laughs> Wouldn't it be terrible if you were going up there, going up through the crowd, and then you realised that you didn't have any parents? <laughs> <laughs> you just have to pick I... some old woman and hug her in the middle of it. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> okay, the category is the environment. The answer is between 19 and 23. What is the question? Is it where the postman puts mail for number 27? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about what percentage of the vote constitutes a great result for the Liberal Democrats? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many people actually care about the environment? <laughs> they actually genuinely care. Yeah. Don't Aching. say they care, but actually yeah. care about it. At a good level. Well, let's face it, we all have far bigger and more tropical fish to fry. <laughs> <laughs> Green, Greenpeace constantly thump on about how we must save this planet for our children, our children's children, and our children's children's children. But hold on, what if they don't have any children? Uh, they might not want children. Let's not spend what is quite a lot of money <laughs> on hypothetical children. Yeah. Also, also, I know kids, they like bikes. They like shiny red bikes. I promise you, you show a kid a clean rural stream and a shiny bike, and I'll show you a kid sitting on a bike whilst pissing in a stream. <laughs> Are they not the future? <laughs> so, so you, you spray on. <laughs> <laughs> is it the, the number of English counties likely to be underwater in a hundred years' time? It's, uh, yes, indeed. It's oh. very, very oh close God, to that. Yes, it? it's oh. very, very close <laughs> to Jesus that. Christ! That was, that was, that was, <laughs> that's terrible! <laughs> that was less a joke, more an alarming fact. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I, thought it, I thought it was something ridiculously awful, but <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. gonna happen! Was, <laughs> oh, well. Night, night, my children's children. You can <laughs> ride around on the bike in smaller and smaller circles. <laughs> Vanishing piece of land. <laughs> to be honest, Dara, in Scotland we have mixed feelings about global warming <laughs> because we will get to sit on the mountains and watch the English drown. <laughs> <laughs> More pineapple, who is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a coconut here, I'm fine. <laughs> the actual question I was looking for was by how many feet could 
this is a very important part of the sentence. Oh, thank God Could sea levels rise if global warming causes the ice caps to melt? In truth, the effects of rising water levels upon Europe won't be fully known for years, perhaps decades. The only thing that leading climatologists have said for sure, Holland's f***ed. <laughs> This next round is our version of Question Time called Ask the Politicians. I'll play the host. Joe, Frankie and John, if you could move up among the audience, please. Ready to ask your questions to the politicians sitting at the front here. If you could move in. Rory, you're Tony Benn. Hugh, you're a Tory spokesman. And Al, you're the voice of the silent majority. <laughs> Can we have our first audience question from the uh, swarthy Greek lady uh, on that side there, please? <laughs> Yes. Oh, thanks. Uh, I was just wondering that as Britain chairs the European presidency, what changes should we be making? And uh, would anyone like some falafel? <laughs> <laughs> falafel to an event? Well, I've never falafeled in my life. And, never <laughs> in my life. and the European Union? Uh, well, I've never been a fan of the European Union. I think it'd be a very good thing if Britain were towed away into the North Sea a little bit further away. <laughs> Now, that's strange. It's the first time I've ever agreed with anything you've ever said, mate. Right? As a well, you've obviously not been listening. No, that's all no, I can say. Right. <laughs> I've been listening. I've simply chosen to remain silent up until now. <laughs> well, I must now, say, you're very uh, uh, No, no. I'm sorry, I am the voice of the silent majority. Well, I must say, <laughs> obviously, having said that, I'm no longer a member, but... <laughs> I think European Union, change your name to the British Empire as a mark of gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> Call a euro and a pound. Right? A new kit. <laughs> that, you surely would possibly agree with that? I feel, really, the very best thing to do would be to move the European Parliament to the Millennium Dome. They're both a waste of money. It'd be good to get them both lumped together. <laughs> OK, the lady there in the, uh, in the middle. Uh, you have a question? Indeed. Now that um, Cub Scouts don't have to swear allegiance to the Queen and God anymore, um, who do the panel think that they should swear allegiance to? Tony Benn. I think you have to go a long way to beat Clement Attlee. <laughs> 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 you look at the 1945 Labour Manifesto, it's a poem. It's a wonderful poem. Absolutely. And Clement is... But surely there has to be something more contemporary than that. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about socialism, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> So I think if you wanted to put something contemporary in socialism, we'd have to go back a long way. But, uh, no, I, I, or Asquith. <laughs> Asquith, OK. <laughs> After your Asquith? I, personally, have sworn allegiance to a Cub Scout. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's absolutely lovely and he does marvellous things with his woggle. <laughs> <laughs> um, one phone call, you're on a register. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you uh, pledge allegiance to? Voice of the silent majority? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking for the people who would have shot that burglar a third time. <laughs> he shouldn't have done that anyway. He should have dug a pit with steel spikes and manure on the spikes and a rug on the top. In comes the burglar, falls in. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who would I swear allegiance to? Yeah. Well, in fact, oh, this is nonsense. It's got to be the Queen. I've got to go back to the Queen. And I love the royal family. Not just out of my disloyalty. <laughs> if not that, then what? I fancy her. <laughs> They're all dirty, those German birds, aren't they? <laughs> do, you, do you follow the, the rules of etiquette when meeting the royal family? What are you talking about? I recently discovered that one is not meant to turn one's back on the Queen. I, I don't understand. She's very unlikely to nick anything. <laughs> <laughs> This round is called Dating Videos. The players take on the identity of a famous newsmaker and record a Lonely Hearts video in the style of that person. Everyone else has to try and guess who they are. So, Hugh, you're up first. Please make your way over to the performance area and show us your dating video. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> I do eventually hope to be able to count higher than that. <laughs> uh, let, me paint, let me paint you a picture of myself. Um, <laughs> I, I can do that. I've, uh, I've got an art A-level. <laughs> uh, well, 
I'm a, I'm a pretty cool guy, I don't smoke. Well, you know, nothing legal anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I support charities. I, I like to wear a wristband. Uh, oh no, I like to wear an armband. <laughs> uh, make minorities history. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I'm a redhead, which I get from my father, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Oh, Prince Harry. It is, of course, Prince Harry. Well done, you. So, Dan, congratulations. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. uh, let me tell you. A little bit about myself. <laughs> How long have you got? <laughs> I was held in prison for nearly 30 years before they found out the truth about me and made me president. It's like George Bush, only the other way around. <laughs> uh, I'm over 80. I look like a pint of Guinness. But wait till you see Nelson's column. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Nelson Mandela. It's Nelson Mandela. Well done, Rory. Sit down, please, sir. <laughs> that was Lonely Heart Nelson Mandela. Quite a catch, to quote the Pretoria police in 1964. <laughs> <laughs> this next round, we call it Prime Minister's questions. For the purposes of this game, I'll be the Speaker of the House of Commons. Rory, you're going to take the role of Tony Blair. Joining you on the front benches are Mark and Andy as your Labour colleagues. Joe, Hugh and frankly, you are members of the opposition. You'll be taking a small story, but treating as if it's the heavyweight issue of the week. The news that Kevin the monkey has escaped from his cage in Belfast Zoo following a dispute with his father. Here! Here! Just say Sit down or I'll smash your face in, you Tory <laughs> yeah. Can I just uh, say sorry, that the, this... The, the Deputy Prime Minister makes his point in his own way and I agree with his sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that this whole <laughs> monkey escape incident, which the uh, Prime Minister has drawn a veil over, really, involved some terrible behaviour on behalf of the monkey. And does it not just point up the paucity of his policy of ASBOs, the antisocial baboon orders? <laughs> <laughs> Will the Prime Minister please serve an ASBO? Or, or at least give him a banana? <laughs> I have to say, no. I have to say we will be using food, uh, in this case bananas, and we hope to arrest him soon. In fact, shortly we hope that the uh, animal in question will be enjoying bananas in custody. <laughs> In Belfast, in Belfast, isn't there a very real danger that this monkey will get its hands on a drum, join the Orange Order, <laughs> and blend seamlessly into society? Listen, in as much as that has with the orangutan and baboons within which the primates, to which the right honourable gentleman has within this policy referred, I refer thee to the referment with my good Prime Minister has honourably referred to on the day before. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for mentioning primates. This party has developed uh, primate gagging advice, or as we like to call it, PG tips. <laughs> yes, Scott, what about the rumour that this monkey is, in fact, your mother-in-law? <laughs> in as much as, relatively, within that, the Prescott family name has been undertaken to be put <laughs> forward and rescinded within that which the monkeys, not within excluding those of the baboon fraternity, I refer the Prime Minister to the excellent work that he has done over the last 243 minutes. I have one very simple question. What the f*** are you on about? <laughs> The final 
final round tonight is Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK. The first subject tonight is things a Wimbledon commentator would never say. <laughs> 40, 37. <laughs> Well, there is Sharapova, and I'm sure, like me, you long to have those long, moist Russian legs wrapped around your face. <laughs> is it just me, or are they just hitting it back and forth? <laughs> <laughs> How wonderful to see an all-British final. <laughs> well, there's a ball boy needs taming. <laughs> Advantage, Whittakem. <laughs> and as they come to the first, it's Spanish steps over safely, <laughs> followed by Red One. All this grunting is giving me the horn. <laughs> In the women's game, why does the pretty one always lose to the moose? <laughs> Now, that one must be a man. <laughs> OK, our next topic is... Discarded titles for the next Harry Potter book. Harry Potter is thrown in jail for wearing a hood. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Wet Dream. <laughs> Captain Corelli's mandolin. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Mudblood Prince in a Nazi uniform. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> uh, Harry Potter does Dallas. <laughs> Red Hot Muggle on Muggle action. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Child Actor's Inevitable Mental Breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Abu Ghraib. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the two other kids who can't act. <laughs> OK, our next topic is bad ways to start a party political broadcast. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow paedophiles... <laughs> Hang on, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Good night! <laughs> As you know, the football is on the other channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say that it is mostly the blacks. <laughs> I'm John Prescott. Now, I expect you're wondering why I'm making... <laughs> <laughs> I think our policies are best expressed... ..in song! <laughs> <laughs> OK, our next topic is... ..things you'd never hear a French person say. <laughs> of course, it looked hopeless, but we kept fighting. <laughs> I'd like a bottle of Burgundy and a Dairy Lee Dunker, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're English. How nice to meet you. <laughs> J'aime beaucoup, Monsieur Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> I've just bought a wonderful little holiday home in the south of Birmingham. <laughs> And we throw that part of the animal away. <laughs>